Hello everybody, John here, and today on To The Garage, we look at how to hook up your A-frame converted car to your motorhome. So we recently had our R-Bar 595 converted to be an A-frame towable car and a Towmaster 2 system with Invisibrake and a few optional extras installed. And in this video we're just going to share with you how quickly and easily you can hook the two vehicles together and in a video to follow we'll share our experiences of towing with it. So first move is just to obviously remove your tow ball cover and remove the plastic caps which cover the holes in the bumper made as part of the install these are black caps but we have now have color coded caps that were included with the kit but just unavailable on the day uh, for various reasons once they're removed you've got these really heavy pins but you push in and do a quarter turn and they lock into position. The bumper has been removed from the R bar for the modification. A complete new bumper beam with the bayonet brackets for this and supports for the electrical connections. Lots of other mods behind there. Put the little bracket with a hole in on the left hand side. And then go fetch your actual towing frame. This lives in a nice little leather bag in the boot. I say lever, I mean leverette. And you got some safety pins with anti loose devices on so they don't come undone. Just remove those pins from your tow bar and then open it up and put the first of your brackets into position. Just gonna wriggle the pin through. And then you drop the safety pin on, on the other side and there's a flick over ring that stops it from coming back out. All very easy, all very lightweight to do, um, but very well engineered it has to be said. The yellow tape on the little tow bars is just a visual cue that you've got them fully engaged. Basically the yellow tape should line up with the bodywork. If it's showing the grey steel before the bodywork, you know that not pushed in properly, but it'd be very hard to get it wrong. Our system was not the cheapest. It's full install, cost over £3,000 with extras. Um, but one of the reasons is this great A-frame with telescopic legs. And what that enables you to do is park your car anywhere within reason behind the vehicle, plus or minus a foot. And you're going to be able to hook up very easily. There's a 13 pin European connector that goes into the car and onto the back of the motor caravan. We had to have that installed on our motor caravan because it's an old one. And this actually charges the batteries in the R bath whilst you're driving because it's using the lights and over a long journey you could arrive with a flat battery. Then you've got a breakaway cable. This is a last resort device that means if everything became detached it would pull on this cord and pull a little pin out of the front of the car uh, where I've just clipped it on. Pulling that pin applies the brakes fully on the car and they will stay on until the battery goes flat basically so that just stops it from going off and doing its own thing where it's a last resort item the brakes in the r bar are controlled electronically and there's also devices detecting deceleration 
and it's all proportional and work through um, vacuum and uses a car servo it's very very good not a cheap conversion it has to be said but you want this thing to be done right in your car neutral handbrake off key in the ignition where it can be the standard spare it doesn't have to be the one with the key fob turn the ignition on all the way till the lights come on let the instrument cycle and then turn the key all the way off and leave it there check the steering lock is not going to come on and we are done around the back there are stainless steel sprung loaded clips to fit your replacement number plate and a trailer sign to put in the rear window the last step is just to pull away and start driving your motor caravan. The telescopic arms, which make it so easy to hook up, lock out after the first sort of left and right wiggle from the motor caravan. You'll see the right hand one lock now. And that is it, they won't extend the door. Locked. Now the front and rear indicators on your bath will mirror those on the motor home. The brake lights obviously will come on whenever the brakes are being applied and the side lights on the rear but not the front so it doesn't dazzle you will work uh, whenever you've got them on on the motorhome. Well, no. clocks an hour uh, fast British daylight saving time I've got to saw that so I've been driving for about five hours now just stopped for a comfort break my own facilities so no issues there just going to go out and check round Snoopy make sure everything's okay back there interesting thing while well, going down the motorway I did hear a lot of clattering going on which was snow and ice sliding off the roof of Ruby and then in the camera, I could watch it thudding into Snoopy behind. So that's an unexpected little thing to look out for. Pretty filthy. The mud. Yeah, stuff is clattering into it. That can't be avoided. You're no different if you had a articulated lorry. The snow and ice eventually breaks away and comes clattering down. That's looking good really don't know she's there it's a very good tow right. to get underway pound out some more miles check out my rig It's a very enjoyable vehicle to drive you don't feel hemmed in obviously <laughs> it is like sitting in a living room whilst you, you're driving uh, and it does shrink around you quite quickly visibility is pretty good as you can see obviously at the front epic a massive windscreen the only blind spot is if you come onto a T-junction wanting to turn left and it's slightly tapered 
um, the B pillar, if you can call it that, is kind of level with your head, but it's quite a long way across. So in order to see around, you've really got to lean forward. And even then you can only get a little bit of an angle back. So do have a bit of a blind spot. Down on the right hand side, the instrument panel we've got uh, Garmin motorhome specific sat nav which knows the weight, height, width of the vehicle and directs us accordingly. And gives some good hints and tips. And we've got the rear view camera. Got two views. This sort of one I use for driving. I can see the top of Snoopy in that, but more importantly, see what's going on behind me. And I've got a slightly wider angle view, but straight down, where I can actually see the back of the motorhome, the hitch, uh, the tone arrangement, and Snoopy itself. And interestingly, because there's a steel band, chrome band, at the top of the steering wheel on Snoopy, when the windscreen's not covered in snow, as you go around the bend, you can see the car steering itself, which is quite fun. Um, when I put the indicators on, on Ruby, you can watch the indicators on the front of Snoopy mimicking it. Quite cool, and just reassures you that they're working on the back as well. And then there's this light on the dashboard, tells you not when the brake lights are on but when the brake is being applied in Snoopy. Right, let's get going again. Hopefully you'll join us next time when I'll give you my detailed review of the pros and cons and the full how it is to tow experience. If you're enjoying our channel then don't forget to subscribe and click the little bell icon so you get notifications of new videos. And please give us a thumbs up or thumbs down and you can share the videos. And below the video is always the area where you can comment and get involved with the chat.